Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Sanabria. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I wanted to cover cross-origin resource sharing or cores. I'm a part of 100 devs right now and I help a lot of people in the Discord voice chats. And one of the common things I've been seeing is that people are getting caught up on cores errors. You're getting blocked when you're trying to use the fetch API to make requests. And they're, they're saying that the request is blocked because of cores. So, what is cores? Well, if we pull it up on the MDN, and I think that everyone should read this page in its entirety, just to have it in the back of your mind when you, you know, as we go forward in 100 devs, basically cores or cross-origin resource sharing, it's a HTTP header-based mechanism that allows the browser to block loading certain resources from web servers. So in, in a TLDR, it's a way for the browser to block requests that are going to unknown origins, right? So what does that really mean? Well, let's say that you have JavaScript running on some sort of server, and that server is located on example.com, and you make a request to like, you know, some random API in the internet. When you make that request, the API will respond back to your JavaScript um, script, and it should set a course header or not. If the course header is not set correctly, then the browser would be like, whoa, 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 I don't know where this response came from. And since it didn't have a course header, I'm not gonna allow this to load. So let's let's see what that kind of looks like. And this is for more like security reasons. It prevents browsers, um, scripts that run in the browser from launching arbitrary HTTP requests to random domains. Uh, is it the most secure? Not, not at all but it's just one more layer to security in the browser because we've all been to web pages where tons of JavaScripts running in the background and we have no idea what's actually going on. This is a way to prevent it from making arbitrary HTTP requests and doing nasty things. So let's see what that actually looks like uh, in our own HT, uh, in our own fetch, like HTTP calls. So I have two APIs here in my right tab, um, my right window. I have one called Dogfax API Heroku app and one called random.dog. If I refresh my page, you'll see that I'm getting new facts each time. And if I refresh my page for the other one, you'll see that I'm getting new images each time. Notice my file size is changing and so is the URL. So these are just two APIs that are related to dogs, simple uh, APIs. Let's say that I wanted to use the fetch API to make an HTTP request here. So I would do fetch, I'd give it the URL, and then I would do a bunch of dot bends. So I'd get the response and I would, you know, parse the JSON out of the response. And then I would do another then, and then I would get the data. And then I would like console.log the data, right? Simple, simple fetch request here to just get this, this resource and display it. You'll notice that when I make that, I get a promise back and I get these errors, right? So the error says cross origin request blocked. The same origin policy disallows reading the remote resource at this URL. The reason was because the cores header access control allow origin is missing. Status code 200. So I see the status code 200. That means the web server here, this API, my fetch API request made it to the web server. The web server responded back to me, but my browser is saying, hold up, even though the web server responded to you successfully, I'm blocking this from displaying in your JavaScript because the course header is not set. What does that even mean? Well, every time you make an HTTP request, there are certain headers that get sent uh, on the request and on the response. So if you open up your developer tools and you navigate to the network tab and you click the network request, mind you, I'm in Firefox. It might be slightly different for you if you're in Chrome or Safari or Edge or any other browser that you're using. And if you navigate to the request and you look at the headers tab, you'll see that the request has headers and the response has headers. So the request headers are what go to the web server and the response headers are what come back from their web server. Notice in the response headers, there's only these six headers here. And none of these headers are this access control allow origin header. So basically what's happening here is my JavaScript that's running 
is getting a response from this web server. And since the browser is not finding that header, the browser is denying that from displaying in my JavaScript. So it's protecting me. So what I can determine here is that this dogfax API isn't really a public API, because if it doesn't set this um, course header, this access control allow origin, how can it truly be public? Nobody would be able to make these requests in JavaScript. We might be saying, hey, Matt, when you refresh the page, like you're getting data, right? Yes. But when I refresh the page here, this is my browser making the request because I'm going to that URL specifically in my address bar. This is not some JavaScript script making the request for me. That's the difference. That's why it works in here, but doesn't work in the JavaScript because cores only applies to scripts that work inside your browser, not the actual, not the actual request that you make from your address bar. Slightly different. So if this API truly isn't public, what can you do about it? Well, there's two things. Um, you could either use what's called an HTTP proxy to make this request on your behalf, but that requires you to have a proxy set up and you know a little bit more involved. Or you could just find another API. Clearly, the, the maintainers of this API are not meeting the core standards and they're not truly a public API. So if I wouldn't support those APIs, I'd go find another one. So I would scrap this API and go find another one. So here on the next tab, I have another API. If I refresh the page, it still does work. And if I open up the network tab and reload and click the request, you will see that there's request headers and response headers. If I look at the response headers here, you'll notice that I have a bunch of access control allow headers, ones like allow headers, allow methods, allow origin. Specifically, the one we care about is the access control allow origin. Notice how it's set to a star or an asterisk. That means this web API accepts requests from any origin. The star here means any. So if you're running on example.com, example.net, example.org, it doesn't matter where your JavaScript's running. If you make a request to this API, it will respond to you and you will not get caught up in this error state here. So if I go back to my console on the left-hand side, and I grab this URL and I put it in here, you'll see that now if I make this request, I actually get the data back and no errors. So I just wanted to show you all that because I know it's been tripping up a few people um, as I've been talking to them in Discord. So that's essentially cores in a nutshell. Now there's a little bit more to it than this. I just wanted to keep it a little bit high level. That way you all can understand that it's not your code. It's the web API. So my advice, find an API that, that supports cores correctly, a true public API, and you won't run into any of these issues. So if you like this content, please feel free to leave a comment. Um, subscribe to the channel if you'd like as well. And if you want to see more things like that, let me know. And I will see you all in the 100 Devs Discord. Thank you so much.